Greetings. So in this video, I am going to be attempting, I'll emphasize the word attempting, to repair the old dash out of my 1978 Corvette. And I'm going to try to make all this look brand new and it's even missing a piece and what have you. Now, let me just stop here real quick. If you're looking for a video on how to remove said dashboard. I actually recorded me removing this in detail, everything I had to disconnect, every screw, everything, and I posted that out there. So if you're looking for a video on how to remove the dashboard, I actually have that video made already, or I took that dash out. And it's out there, and it's uh, pretty good, if I do say so myself. And if you're looking for a video where I'm installing the dashboard, I haven't made it yet because I'm about to pull the trigger on ordering a new dashboard. These things are like 650, 700 bucks. Okay. And I'm going to try to restore this one before I pull that trigger. And I'm going to be using a couple different things. I don't know which one will work more gooder. So I'm going to try this plastic weld to kind of fill in some gaps and fill in some of this. I don't know how that'll work. I have a feeling it's all going to come down to this Bondo. Um, okay, there's the Bondo. There's the cream hardener. And this is for if there is big voids that you're filling in so it's not just 100% Bondo. You put this metal backing to give it strength, okay? So this will give, so in the video, you'll probably see me use this. I don't want to have to explain every time, so I'm just going to explain it now. This sits in there to give it strength to fill in massive voids, okay? So, and then you put just a little bit of um, hardener in with the cream. So if you were to make a, a decent sized thing of the cream, then you would just put one drop of hardener and mix it together it turns color and then spread it in there like you'll see me do so let's take a look before i get started this dashboard is in pretty bad shape um it's got this out of it it's got cracks everywhere and look i mean it's so brittle Gosh, dang it, i'm making it worse now but the bondo should strengthen all that up and this i mean look at look at this okay but the layer of bondo is going to strengthen this up or at least it should so anyway i've rambled on enough let's get started and go okay so i'm going to start this dash i'm going to do it one thing at a time starting at the bottom you can see here this is is missing it's, I don't know what's happened so I'm gonna start by just filling this in and I don't want to make this big blob that's gonna break off I'm just gonna try to round this round this out okay so let's mix up the Bondo and get this taken care of okay so here I'm gonna grab some cream and I'm gonna try to do enough to Get enough out to do both sides and there's no real formula for this other than just kind of an art form so there's the cream there's a little bit of hardener okay and so now i'm going to mix it until it becomes this pink color Okay, so now the timer is in motion and I've got to get this going. All right. Okay, so now I'm going to... The thing is, is I know this isn't going to happen. This is not going to happen in one coat. So you have to be patient with it. If you ever mess with drywall mud or something, it takes multiple coats and sanding. So... If you try to do it in one coat, you're probably doing too much. But I want to get it decent. Okay. And this is going to 
require a lot of sanding. So I'm probably just about got it. I'm just wanting to, it doesn't have to be perfect. I just want to take off that broken off edge so it doesn't look broken off. All right, I'm probably just going to stop right there. Go ahead. So now this side is broken off as well. And let me try to get it. I just, I don't want to do too much. This is just the first coat. And I'm just looking to hide this broken off part. And I'm just going to, I'm really going to shape it with the sander. This is just the first coat. And I'm just trying to get all this built in here. It's really going to come down to the magical work of the sander. Let's get this in here. Just to kill off that broken off edge. Ugh. This is going to look so much more gooder. Okay, so I'm going to stop there. If you, try to, if you try to do too much on the first coat, you're probably just going to mess things up. It does require a lot of work with the sander, and that's just the way it is with this stuff. So there's that. Okay, so this has a big blob missing out of it. And this is just going to have to, this is going to take a few coats and the sander and all that because this is really missing a bit. And I'm just going to get this in here the best I can. And I have to tell myself it's the first coat, don't do too much. And I'm going to spray this with a texture too so so that's pretty much all I'm gonna do on this first coat is right there and I'm gonna let the sander finish that up so I'm gonna stop there for that section Okay, so I'm getting ready to do this larger side, which is going to require quite a bit. So actually, I'm going to mix up a good chunk because, yeah, that's going to require quite a bit. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to put some hardener in there. That looks about right. It's kind of an artwork, more than an exact science. I'm going to mix this together and then I'll have to get started straight away once it mixes. No time for dilly dally. If you're dilly dally, we don't have time for you right now. So now I'm just going to start. This is a, a real mess. Oh, of course, I just put my finger on that, but oh, actually, it's hardening up already. So, okay, I better get to it. Um, so this dashboard is pretty much trashed anyway, so we're going to try to save it. Who knows? Okay. So I want to put your coat. Again, I'm, I don't enjoy using the sanders, but that's the reality of it. Is this is going to be a lot of sanding. And that's just the way it is. This dashboard is so brittle, but this Bondo everywhere will strengthen it up. And that's what you want. Just like that. So it's not so brittle. So I think 
I'm going to go keep going across the top here, actually. Um, all this needs strengthened up with this Bondo. I'm just going to... This is so brittle. I know the camera can't see it, but see how brittle this is? It just needs Bondo across the top of it. And that's just the way it is. And the sander is going to have to take some of this to fix it. here okay there is and uh, I'm not Good one, so I'm gonna fill in this coop. So I think it's time for a new spatula. I can't get this one to be smooth anymore. Go get a new, new spatula. Okay, let's get back to it. I'm trying to make this halfway smooth. Using the sanders is, is a necessity, but using the sanders, smooth all this out anybody with experience will tell you it takes a little more than a smile to get it worked out it's not fun but necessary I need to work faster because my goop is starting to set up on me as I move. Smooth that out so that looks nice when it's done, dried up. Oh yeah, I may have mixed up too much at once because this is really starting to set up. Get Bondo in here so it strengthens up. pretty much it my goop is pretty much set up so that's probably going to be it for the first layer um, which it looks like a mess and it is but the sander is going to take a lot of this out of here
gonna need some sanding and it worked big time. That's all right. Yeah, what a mess. So I wanted to do this on our kitchen table, but my wife wouldn't let me. She said it would be too messy. I don't know, she might be right. <laughs> Okay, so the Bondo has set up, it says it only needs 20, 30 minutes, but I let it set up on the overnight. And uh, this is a, the part where it looks a little bit scary because it looks like, oh my God, but this is the first coat. I'm gonna hit it with the big belt sander. I've worked with Bondo before, so I know kind of what to expect, but I've never worked with it on a vinyl dashboard before. However, let me tell you this, before where this was really brittle and would just break, um, this is really super strong and I'm going to put three layers of Bondo on but I got my belt sander and I'm going to get to it. Okay, so I've been standing on it for about four or five minutes and you can see it's really starting to come together. That's what I was talking about. That first coat, you know, kind of looks like this and looks scary. But once you start getting into it, it's really starting to take shape. And I'm going to spray a texture on this too, so it'll hide a lot of flaws. But I got to do this uh, Bondo and sanding three more times. So, um, yep, yeah, it'll come to come uh, better into shape each time. Okay, so this is after the first coat of Bondo and sanding. And we'll take a look at it here. Remember this corner was ripped out. Okay, so there's that coming together. This corner was uh, had a chunk missing a little bit of a chunk it's right there so this is uh, this was completely out and it's back in now and this is really strong I'm really happy with how this is turning out okay there's that yeah this is uh, I'm really happy with how this is turning out so far so I am very pleased with how the Bondo is turning out. I had a major crack right here and it's pretty stiff. Uh, it's got a little bit of give right there. But all this was so brittle and that's really strengthened it up. I've got a few areas that's a little bit of a problem area right here a little bit. And I'm just gonna take this one step at a time. I did, uh, <coughs> excuse me. I purposely busted off some Bondo there in there just because it did not uh, take worth the crap and so I just knocked it down like I said this is going to take two or three coats of, of Bondo and I'm gonna to have to um, reshape all this by hand I've got the part and just you know the vent part and I'm just gonna make sure it fits in there before I do any kind of primer or anything like that um, but the Bondo does pretty amazing. Like this used to be so brittle and full of cracks and it is, it is taut. And so anyway, my point is I am so tempted just to keep going with Bondo. Okay. Because I'm really happy with it. And this is just the first coat. Okay. So it'll strengthen up. But as promised, I said, I would try this and I've never used this before. This is JB Weld, plastic weld. I'm not being sponsored by them in any way. So I am going to try some on this dash and see what it does. 
Okay, it says it only needs five minutes to set up and an hour to cure. Oh boy, it comes out quick. I thought this would be messy. It looks like it is. Okay. Okay, so I'm sorry to show my back the back of my hand so much, but see if I can get this. I'm going to rely on sandpaper to get a lot of this. So um if you're trying to get it perfect with one coat and think you're not going to have to sand, you're probably doing too much. Um, that's just not the way this stuff works. I'm actually pretty happy with that. Um, yeah, I'm actually really happy with that. I will warn you, this is just me doing this stuff, but uh, boy, it stinks. I'm in a well-ventilated area in my garage. Man, the stench is just overpowering. Good Lord. It reminds me of a video I made just a couple, couple videos ago where somebody actually passed out. So I think I'm going to go a little further with it and use it in some other areas. I will say it's, it's a little tricky to get... My only criticism, this is tricky to get both sides of this to come out evenly. Uh, you have to mess about with it. It's uh, not as easy as they let on. And I'm sorry, I know the camera can't pick all this up, but it's difficult to do this through my camera. Actually, that's not so bad. Okay. Okay, so that went so well that I think I'm going to go ahead and do this other area as well. And the thing is, boy, it's tricky to make sure there. The, both sides come out evenly. I'm going to do this whole area, so I'm going to be pretty, pretty liberal with what I'm putting on here. Okay. So I don't have long to work with this. And... Can't uh, mess about too long here. This, uh, okay, that's not bad. Not bad at all. I'm trying to get this whole area because it was a problem area for sure. Boy, it does set up quick. You got about, uh, I would guess, four minutes to work with this about four minutes to get all this in here okay I'm actually really impressed with this okay so I'm really curious to see what this JB Weld stuff does to this and my camera is just barely can't believe it hasn't fallen over so i'm going to try to do this quick put this out here and then i gotta back out you gotta push this back out or otherwise it keeps oozing out and uh i'm going to try to do this quick before my camera falls over and of course now that i've hit record i think somebody's at my front door and my dog is having a fit with it Okay, it needs a little bit more. Okay, and then back that pressure off so it doesn't keep oozing out. I gotta do this quick. And I'm gonna have to reshape a lot of this by hand, and that's fine. This was a major splice right here. I don't know. The Bondo actually put it back together pretty good. The Bondos held it together. Um, this, I'm just curious to see what the JB Weld stuff does. I don't, I don't know. Right here, right now, I don't know which one I like more gooder. Um, well, that's got pretty good. All right, get this just a little bit in here too. 
right. Okay, so in this next layer, I need to fill in some of the bigger voids that were left. So I've got my aluminum mesh, which kind of helps hold everything together. So I'm going to concentrate on that spot. And there's a spot over here. There it is. Right there. So there's a, another spot right there that needs filled in. So I'm just trying to fill in all the voids. Like, I don't know if the camera can see this real well, but there's a, there's a gap there, there's a gap there. I have this really big gap right down here. So I took some of that aluminum mesh to help hold it all together because it's big enough that it should warrant some extra support, like rebar and concrete kind of idea. Now for this layer where I'm filling in some gaps, um, I could use Bondo. And uh, I've been really impressed with this uh, epoxy stuff. So I bought this from Hobby Lobby. It's an actual epoxy and I'm going to use it to fill in some of these voids. And I'm really curious to see how, how it does. But Bondo works just fine. But for the sake of the video, I'm trying some different things to experiment with. So. Okay, so here we go. I'm just going to put this in here. And I'm looking through the camera, so... Sorry, it's kind of difficult, but... There it goes. Alright, so I've got that. Go in there. I'm going to back this pressure off just a little bit. There we go. Alright, so... Making a pretty good mess. But i try to... And uh, I'm not terribly worried about it because I am going to hit all this with the sander pretty good. Get smoothed out. <clears throat> like I've been big talking this video and you've seen me do a timer, timer two. Okay, so that's pretty good. Boy, this stuff stinks. Make sure you, if you do it, make sure you're well ventilated area. A little more up here. off a little bit okay oh, I'm sorry the camera is a little shaky I uh, don't have my lovely assistant today actually just on my lunch I'm trying to do a little bit while the weather's nice again I'm gonna hit all this with the sander pretty good too Here's another area. Get that. And that. Might as well do that too. I'm gonna back this pressure off with one hand. I have to back that pressure off or I'm going to lose all my material. Alright. See if I can rebuild this area here. It's like this. It's hard to do with the camera and uh, all that, so I apologize. This is getting a little squirrely, but I think I'm getting it okay where you, the audience can see. Okay. Maybe I'll stop rambling and concentrate on my work. Maybe. I can do that. If there's one thing I can do, it's stop rambling. That's not a problem. Just say the word and I can stop anytime. No problem at all. Okay. okay, so it's about time. I've got enough Bondo and uh, resin stuff on here that I need to start sanding and getting some of this smoothed out. I've got 100 grit sandpaper, <clears throat> a file with a bevel on one side, and a rat tail file. And I'm going to start just cleaning this up and start shaping it. Just what I'm doing now. By cleaning up, I mean smoothing out. <laughs> and, uh, okay. Okay. 
these and all this now again doesn't have to be perfect because i'm going to be using the texture and i may have to get out my uh sander this uh ended up when it dried it kind of perked up a little bit right here and right here and that's okay i can just still sand that down and put another coat over it that's probably what i have to do okay so i just want to make sure this is smooth it feels smooth but like this. I want to show you something here in just a minute about shaping some of this. Uh, okay, so I thought my file would be a good tool for this, and it is. This has got a bevel to it. And I thought I might need my rat tail file, but actually I think this is getting it pretty good. You see how I just got that this whole chunk was missing and I'm just trying to now I will fill in this little bit of an area right there but you don't really know where those areas exist until you get to hack it around on it okay okay so this side of the dash had the same problem I am going to use my I got a little bit of a heavy duty rat file tail see I've got just a little bit of glob of stuff here and uh I'm just going to try to, uh, instead of just using sandpaper and everything, these files work pretty good. Oh yeah, that's actually getting that really good. Very happy with that. Oh wow, yeah, that's great. Okay, and I think I'm actually going to finish this off with my beveled file here okay so i'm looking through my camera i'm doing this at the same time so yeah that's smoothing out a lot better before this was just a chunk missing and now it's really taking shape I show the audience everything about it. You see where I filled in with Bondo a couple times, and now I'm just smoothing it out. That's pretty good. I'm gonna set the camera down and just keep working it just a little bit more. Okay, so I'm gonna consider this area done, other than you know it's uh, not finished. But as far as it's uh, patchwork, I'm gonna consider that back up to par and. When you do projects like this, it does seem overwhelming, but, um, you know, you just take it same way you eat an elephant, one bite at a time. So that's that section, it's that section, and in your mind just work it as a bunch of individual problems, one piece at a time. And so now here I've decided to use my file again, I've had pretty good success with that. Uh, when I get done <clears throat> with all the big sanding and filing, I'll probably use like a 400 grit sandpaper or something and just kind of loosen this out a little bit. Yeah, that's looking good. And if you remember, you know, all this was missing here. I just need a flat line across here. So I'm just going to kind of fill. I don't really care about all that crap okay so I'm very happy with this <laughs> excuse me very happy with this and uh, let's go on to the next section you know like this here this was just a basic to run off too much goop but uh, It doesn't take too much to get it what I'm calling cleaned up by that I just mean smoothed back out you know actually I thought I was gonna have to get my belt sander back out but this file is actually getting this very well I'm actually really happy with how this file is taking that down I don't know if the camera can really see that or not 
Now this is just aluminum piece in here, so it it will file and sand down. Of course, you don't want to file it down so much that it's gone. And it, it's the purpose, of course. But let's get that smoothed out, and then once I get it smoothed out, I will put either bondo or some kind of epoxy back over this, probably from all the way over here to way over here, and just really make that smoothed out. Okay, so the next thing I have to do is make sure the speaker cover, the vent, and the uh, speaker cover fits in here. And as you can see, I got uh, a little sloppy with uh, the, the epoxy and, and the Bondo, and, and I knew that would happen. And it's best just to come back and clean it up later. And for that, I have this necessary tool because it's early in the morning. And I've got an assortment of files. Got a couple of rat tail files, beveled file, a heavier file to start with, sandpaper, and this is the vents and stuff that I'm talking about in here. It's... Okay, so what I want to do is just make sure. And there's a see, there's a little clip right there. There's a little lip that needs to stay free of debris. If you're getting debris in there, then it will clip. So. I got uh, some work to do there, and same thing with the speaker covers. Take a look at that. Oops, wrong one. Here. So again, same thing. I gotta clean out some of these corners, and there's a little lip underneath there. That I gotta make sure it's free of debris, so that this can fit in there right. So that's the next step that I'm going to use those files and sandpaper for. I know the camera can't see it very well. My shadow keeps getting in the way, but this is actually sanded pretty smooth. And I am going to, just as a side note, I'm going to make a video where I like sand these down and then use some plastic primer and plastic paint to get these looking new again. Okay, so I'm starting off with my heavier file. Heavier as in it's got bigger teeth as opposed to a finished up after this is a that's a finer grade teeth okay and just in case people don't know about files or something so I'm doing it one-handed at the moment but if you get the idea see how that starts digging that out of there so I'm just gonna keep working this just like this Okay, so I've done about all I want to do with my big file. You can see I've really got in there and brought this back to the basic shape it's supposed to be. Alright, so I'm going to switch over and use a finer file. Okay, there we go. I'm going to start smoothing this out. There we go. Okay, I think I need to switch away from the rat tail files. And switch to this. It's a little bit finer, but it has a bevel to it. That's what I'm going to use. Get in these corners just like so. Okay, so I now have it to where this vent uh, cover can fit in there. See where I've shaped that. Okay, and can fit in there. All right, so now I got to move on to the speaker covers. I'll start with this one right here. So with this one, you can see I got quite a bit and uh, in here. So I'm going to start with the heavier rat file, rat tail file, and get in here. need my second hand but you see the idea that it'll go quick I'm gonna set the camera down and knock this out real quick okay so I got that uh, speaker cover to where it can fit in there um, I need to come back and smooth up a little bit of the edges around it uh, but uh, there's the basic shape of it again that one's done so now I need to the speaker cover uh, make sure the speaker cover can fit in it 
Uh, this one won't be too bad. I didn't get too much extra group in there. We'll file that out real quick. Just starting with this big tooth file. Really see how that can really start getting in there. Ooh. <laughs> I'm doing this one-handed looking through my camera, but you get the idea there. Okay. Okay, so now I'm basically just going through and sanding and making just one final check to make sure that I've got everything smoothed out like I wanted here. I spilt a little bit of epoxy and sanding that down smooth. Uh, same thing over right here. Just trying to check everywhere. I got one little spot here that I see that I missed. So I'm gonna sand this smooth. Okay, so I'm done sanding. I'm done getting it to the shape that I want. The vent covers, uh, the speaker covers, all that fits in there. And by the way, this uh, trailer also doubles as a workbench if you haven't noticed in all my videos. So, um, so next I need to clean this up. Okay, so the next thing I want to do to finish out this step is wipe everything down. So there'll be an alcohol is what I'm going to do just to get off, get that fly off there starters there he goes and then get all this debris off of here all right so I'm going to do that right now okay wipe that down rubbing alcohol getting all the oil from my skin and just the different debris that got left behind I want all that off of there okay this things up Get all this stuff off there there we go yep that's nice so just as a quick bonus when you get done with a job like this files are pretty nasty the best way to clean them is with a wire brush and uh cleans them up pretty quick. I do need to set the camera down to, to do this right, but you get the idea. But I do not use wire brush on a grill because one time I had a, a big wire brush that I used on the grill and one of the bristles, uh, I guess got left behind on the grill. Hamburger patty picked it up and I swallowed it. And uh, yeah, it was jammed in my throat. <laughs> I did get it out. I did get it out, but good lord. I know that sounds like a messed up story, and it is, but... Ugh. Okay, so I want to talk about why I'm doing this video in two parts. The main reason is, when I started this video, um, I really wanted to capture a lot of the details of, of, of doing this dashboard. I've seen so many videos where people skip, 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 but I know people are busy and they don't want to watch a longer video, but... I'm getting more content than I thought I would and it's becoming a long video and so I thought I'd kill it off here. This is a good stopping point. Um, that's the first reason. The second reason is there's a few different ways I could go to finish this off now. I think the ways I'm about to mention, they all start with doing this first, okay? And originally I was going to paint this. But I'm having second thoughts. I'm thinking about doing uh, revinyl. Um, so let me just say this. If I'm to paint it, the next steps are simply to prime it, spray it with a primer, spray it with a textured paint, and then spray it one more time with the color that I actually want. And I have it at that point where I could do that now if I wanted. Um, the next step is the revinyl. And that is now the way that I'm leaning towards um, is just to revinyl this. Um, and that's where you just spray adhesive and uh, wrap this. So in part two, I'm going to finish this off. It'll probably be with the vinyl. But the steps that have come this far, if you're wanting to paint you should see you know it's easy from here this is this is the main thing right here 
And then the next thing is um, what they call flocking, you know, uh, flock me, hey, flock you. Um, flocking is where you might see this a lot on dragsters where they just or they're really custom a car where they really have to make a whole new dash there's no piecing something together and so what what they do is they you'd still want to take it to this point okay that's why this is a good stopping point because then there's decisions to be made but you would prime it paint it and then you'd spray it with adhesive and then the flocking mechanism is basically, it's just little flakes, little plastic flakes. And it looks like it comes in a big pepper shaker and you just shake it and the flakes stick to the adhesive and that's it. And it does look sharp and I like it. And of course, there's another way uh, is you can get a, a plastic overlay. Okay, but uh, I'm not uh, going that direction. I didn't want, want it to look plastic. So I am leaning towards the vinyl wrap um, where I'm just gonna adhesive vinyl over this and wrap around everything. And uh, that's what I'm leaning towards to finish this out. Um, a new dash, like I said, it's about $700. So, um, you know, I'm trying to do this on, on the cheap. Uh, still gotta get new seats and all that, Mr. Gosh. So, Anyway, there's some other options if you don't want to do vinyl. Um, you know, you can prime it, paint it, or flock it, uh, or the plastic overlay even. So, I hope that helps. Um, I wish I had part two ready. I decided, I've been spending so much time on this, I decided to go ahead and publish this. Oh, and uh, also, I spent $17 on Bondo, uh, another 10 bucks on Epoxy, a dollar on sandpaper so we're at 28 bucks um so i basically got it this far under 30 dollars so i'm really happy with uh how that's coming about so um and all new badging so exterior looks phenomenal i got to get this interior going so lastly thank you for watching and hopefully it won't be too long um it's February 2023. Hopefully it won't be too long, a couple weeks, and I'll be posting how I finished up this dash. And then ultimately I'll be making a video where I install the dash. And so, as always, thank you for watching. And I demand you have a great day.